Narcotics are incorporated in most drug products. Provided label information are not enough. Many products are contaminated. Due to all of these problems, many laws were enacted and incorporated. In this video, we'll talk about the history of federal pharmacy drugs, which are taken from Debra's textbook, Pharmacy Law. We divided these laws into three main titles, and we will discuss laws related to each title. 1. Laws regarding pharmacy management. 2. Laws that help the start and development of FDA. 3. Laws related to the control of narcotics. First, let's go over laws regarding pharmacy management. The first step in favor of the public was taken in 1820 by 11 physicians who met to establish the first company deal standard of drug products. The Drug Importation Act, which was enacted in 1848, stated that U.S. Customs were given the authority to inspect drug products imported into the United States as an attempt to prevent the importation of adulterated drugs. And in the late 20th century, in 1988 specifically, the Prescription Drug Marketing Act was enacted to reduce public health risks from adulterated or misbranded drugs. This act stated that 1. Ban the sale, purchase, or trade of the drug samples and drug coupons. 2. Restricted reimportation of prescription drugs to the manufacturer of drug product or for emergency medical care. 3. Established requirements for drug sample distribution, storage, and handling. 4. Required state license of wholesale distributors of prescription drugs. 5. Established requirements for wholesale distribution of prescription drugs by unauthorized distributors. And in the same year, 1988, Anti-Drug Abuse Act was enacted. This act was a problem for traffickers because it established the definition of abuse and strengthened authority of the government by adding the death penalty beside confiscating their properties. By these laws and many more, pharmacy management became an easier job. And now let's move to the laws that shaped the FDA. Starting way back in 1862, the President Abraham Lincoln appointed a chemist to serve in the Department of Agriculture in the Bureau of Chemistry. But what is the Bureau of Chemistry? It was the first form of the FDA. It would be improved and renamed in 1927 to the Food, Drug, Insecticide Administration and would have further improvement and the last change of name to the Food and Drug Administration in 1930. The FDA had many roles in the improvement of drug quality. Examples of that are the Insulin Amendment in 1941 and the Penicillin Amendment in 1945, where the FDA was responsible for the safety and effectiveness of insulin and penicillin products. Other example of that was in the Prescription Drug User Fee Act in 1992 which was enacted because manufacturers were required to pay multiple unnecessary regulation fees. So, the FDA made an end to that by decreasing the number of those fees. After eight years of monitoring the food and drug industries, they would realize that they needed a devoted team dedicated to drug safety, so they started the FDCA, the Food and Drug and Cosmetic Administration which would set a number of rules, definitions, and labeling regulations that should be followed. Examples of those rules include 1. All new drugs had to be proven safe when used according to the directions for use prior to marketing. 2. All cosmetics and medical devices were regulated, including color additives. Three. Warnings of habit-forming drugs were required on all package labeling. 4. Authority was granted for factory inspections. Coming back to definitions, 
The FTCA set a number of definitions for legal clarity. Examples of those definitions include drug, food, cosmetic, device, official compendium, new drug, color additive, adulteration, misbranding, and counterfeit drugs. We will be explaining counterfeit drugs in further detail. Counterfeit drugs refer to drugs which are claimed to be owned by an entity other than the persons who actually manufactured the drug. There were also a number of labeling regulations set to avoid mislabeling problems. They include 1. The label must not be false or misleading. 2. The drug must not be an imitation drug. 3. The drug must not be sold under the name of other drug. 4. The packaging and labeling must conform to official compendium standards. 5. The product must be labeled appropriately for storage requirements. And finally, the product must be packaged in child-proof containers. Other important law was set in 1962 after the thalidomide tragedy, which caused many deaths and birth defects. As a result, the drug efficacy amendment was passed and the GMB good manufacturing practice was made. You can watch this video for more information about the thalidomide tragedy. The Safe Medical Device Act in 1990 was set to combat the increasing number of medical device accidents. The act required manufacturers to report those accidents and repair damaged devices. Last but not least, we will go over the laws related to narcotics. 1914 Harrison Narcotic Act. This act established a record keeping requirement for receipt and dispensing of opium or coca leaf products. The possession of narcotic without a prescription became legal. In 1932, Uniform State Narcotic Act. Increased restrictions were imposed on the import and export of opium and coca. The Heroin Act and the Marijuana Tax Act. The purchase or sale of cannabis and heroin became illegal. In 1924 for heroin and in 1937 for cannabis. Narcotic Addicts Treatment Act. Drug addicts were sent to prisons for consuming narcotics. However, after this act, instead of incarcerating them, rehabilitation centers were established to help them recover from the addiction and become active members of society. Thank you for watching. We hope this video was helpful.